Welcome. Thank you for being with me. And I share these words, this verse to, with you. And this verse gives us all, I believe, a purpose. A purpose in life. This verse is, rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. Again I read, rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. For years I've been reading this verse every month. And I believe it's saying to me, to help those who are considering taking their life to stop the nonsense of that thinking. And to realize how val <laughs> valuable you are, you know, and how you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that, uh, uh, to remember that uh, this too will pass, a, tr a time of trouble but you were built to last, okay? So, here's a purpose for you. If you're struggling, look for someone else who's struggling and encourage them to go on and look for a way to go through the pain of life. To always remember, it's not life you'd really ever want to end. It's just the pain of living. And there is a way through that pain, a right way. And you can help yourself and help someone else just because you care for someone else to encourage them. I encourage you to encourage someone each day because you never know what someone's going through. So that's my main focus. And you know who told, tells me this? This is from God's Word. From me reading a proverb, uh, working to read a proverb every day, God's Word in the book of Proverbs, and today's the 24th, so I read the 24th proverb. And this is Proverbs 24, 11. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. Because it's wrong thinking to th ever think of taking your own life. It's wrong thinking, and you need to realize that. And to realize, uh, start thinking the right way and seeing your value, how uniquely you are made and how you have a purpose now to help others <laughs> who are thinking about, uh, you know, ending their life. So, as I have shared before in my earlier messages, uh, uh, over 30 years ago, I felt uh, like uh, ending it all. And thank God I didn't. And uh, I would have missed so many blessings. And uh, so, if you want to hear about God, let's go from here. If you don't want to hear about God, go to my first message, please. And uh, I hope you find encouraging message. Message. So thank you, Lord, for this scripture. I thank you for the truth that you are the way and the truth and the life, Lord Jesus. You are the way. To show us you give us a way so that we can keep going on every day and i thank you jesus as our lord and savior we are never alone that you are with us always to love us and to lead us with who you are the light of the world to lead us through the path of life together with you i thank you in jesus name amen 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 so i've been going through uh you know, we celebrate Christmas almost is here and uh, for this year. And at any time we could celebrate the coming of Jesus. But why did Jesus come? He came to love those who he came to. He came to love the world, to show his love, God's love for the world, his own love for the world. And he came to take a cross to bear a cross for our sins, for all who would believe in him, and take the punishment of God that God demands for sin, which is death, dying in our place for us, that we may be forgiven of our sins and given life with him forever, a new life, made a new creation with him, 
our souls, our being made alive with him. So that's explained in Romans chapter 3. So I'm going to continue on in uh, seeing God's truth and why the cross shows God's love in his justice. The cross of Jesus and his resurrection shows the love of God in his justice. So Romans chapter 3, uh, verse 21 beginning, written by the Apostle Paul, some years after he saw the risen Lord Jesus. When, after he didn't believe in him. I mean, before that, he didn't believe in him. <laughs> when he saw him, he was struck down by him, <laughs> by the light of him, of him coming to, to him. He, he, he said, woke up and saw that Jesus was real, the real Son of God, who died and rose from the dead. But So Paul wrote this, aspired by God. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That was last message. Uh, I was speaking about the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It's a free gift. And what this word redemption means is to let go free for a ransom. And I explained uh, how Jesus said that he gave his life as a ransom for, for the world, for, the, for all who would receive him and believe in his death and resurrection for them. Jesus said this, recorded in Matthew 20, 28, even the Son of Man, that he calls himself the Son of Man, even as the, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's why Jesus came from heaven. That's why we celebrate Christmas he came as the baby born by Mary, the Virgin Mary. And he came for the purpose of serving, serving his Father, his Heavenly Father, fulfilling what he and the Father had agreed even before the foundation of the earth. He agreed what to do for mankind, for God knew that those he who had created would turn away from him. And he provided a way to turn back to him and to have a loving relationship with him. And that way was Jesus coming to this earth to be born as a baby, a perfect, a perfect man he lived as, and to live, live as God. So Jesus says he, to give, he gave, came to give his life as a ransom for many. And that ransom means a price paid. Price paid to deliver us from the bondage of sin and death. Death meaning separation from God for eternity in the torment in hell. God desires no one to perish into hell, into eternal torment. So he provided the way for us to live with him and give us a new life with him. So that price paid is the, a, a, the, the, the <laughs> substitution for us. For in that scripture, Jesus says, he came to give his life as a ransom for many. And as I explained before, that for means in place of. He says, I give my life as a ransom for many. I give my life in place of your life. For I am the one who is the only one who can pay the price for your sins because I am God and I am man. Now, that price paid is described in the scriptures that uh, are spoken of in, in Romans chapter 3, 21, when it says this, but now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. And part of the law and the prophets is the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. And it witnesses 
it foretells the coming of Jesus to this world and why he went to the cross and to pay the penalty for our sins and he purchased our peace and now if you start reading uh, Isaiah 53 it reads like this who has believed what he has heard from us and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed the scholar uh, John MacArthur writes this about these verses these verses are quoted by this verse uh, is quoted by the Apostle John as I mentioned before in chapter 12 of the Gospel of John and G John is is referring to this scripture in Isaiah and he's identifying helping us to identify that Jesus is the person spoken about in Isaiah 53 he is the one who purchases peace for us the jo Apostle John identifies that very clearly uh, that uh, Jesus is the one spoken of here in Isaiah 53 who with his, his sacrifice is purchasing our peace with God and and even the Apostle Paul who wrote Romans 3 inspired by God he too quotes this verse who has believed what he has heard from us and he identifies that also that this verse this chapter in Isaiah Isaiah 53 is talking about Jesus it's foretelling the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection from the dead and uh, back to what the scholar uh, John MacArthur says about this in his notes he says uh, who has believed what he has heard from us okay that's the scripture in Isaiah the question implied that in spite of these and other prophecies, only a few would recognize the servant, that's Jesus, when he appeared. This anticipation found literal fulfillment in Christ's first advent, him coming to be born as a baby by the Virgin Mary. Israel did not welcome him at his first advent. Paul applied the same prophecy to the world at large. Okay, that's what I was mentioning before. So then verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 53 says this, For he grew up before him, for he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty, majesty that we should look at him all right this verse connects to verse one that uh the the one that uh, one would not believe in uh, as being the son of god people would not a lot of people would not believe in jesus as being the son of god and he's called in verse one the arm of the lord has been revealed by his birth to this world and then it says for he so it's talking about the same person the arm of the Lord who is Jesus he grew up before him like a lot, lot young shoe now what's this talking about okay now let, let me read, read what John MacArthur said about part of the verse 1 where I, it says the arm of the Lord at his first coming Jesus's first coming at his first coming, the nation did not recognize the mighty incarnate power of God in the person of Jesus, their deliverer. I read that again. What, what explanation John MacArthur gives about the arm of the Lord and who that is. At his first coming, the nation, of the Jewish nation, did not recognize the mighty incarnate power of God in the person of Jesus, their deliverer. So the arm of the Lord is Jesus becoming flesh, incarnate power of God in the person of Jesus. That's Jesus becoming flesh, as John's gospel says in the first chapter. The word God became flesh. 
Now, verse 2, explaining, uh, verse 2, for he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. It's talking about Jesus here. And he says this, uh, John MacArthur, about uh, verse 2, before him, scripture before him. Uh, who's, who's, who's bef for he grew up before him. What's he talking about here? He is really Jesus, the Son, and uh, before him, him there is God the Father. That's what is explained here. Before him, though unrecognized by the world, Messiah, Jesus, was observed carefully by God, God the Father, who ordered every minute uh, every minute circumstance of his life. Dry ground, the scripture that, that says dry ground. No beauty that we should desire him. The servant, that's Jesus, the servant, he served the Father. The servant, he served us. Jesus did. The servant will arise in lowly conditions, born in a manger, and wear none of the usual, usual emblems of royalty, making his true identity visible only to the discerning eye of faith. Those who would believe he was the Son of God when he came, as he said he was. So, Going farther down into Isaiah 53, verse 5, I read again as I did in the last message, but he was pierced. So we're talking about Jesus here. He was pierced for our transgressions, the nails put in his hands and feet. He was crushed for our iniquities. Why he was killed, crushed, was because of our iniquities, our sins, not his. He was sinless. He was God on that cross and he was man. Upon him was the chastisement that bought us peace. See, Jesus said he came to be a ransom. He paid the price to purchase our peace with God. We do not have peace with God unless we have faith in Jesus purchasing our peace for us on the cross and rising from the dead for the forgiveness of our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's pray. God, I just thank you. <laughs> I pray that everyone that hears this message will realize that Jesus, you are the one who came from heaven, you are God the Son, the Son of God. <laughs> you are God and you are the Son of God, you are called. You came from heaven to die as a, a man who was born as a baby on this earth, to die as a man in our place for our sins, to purchase our forgiveness and to satisfy the wrath of God, to satisfy the anger of, of God against our sin, you took that anger and that wrath for us on the cross with a cruel crucifixion. And I just thank you that you did. May everyone know the seriousness of sin and to realize how it killed you, Jesus. It caused you to suffer a horrible death for us. We thank you, you live, Jesus, live in us as our Lord, our God, who died for us on the cross and rose from the dead. Live in us, give us life with you now and forever, and uh, show us you always living in us. May we always fellowship with you, praying to you and reading your word, fellowshipping with other Christians, other believers in Christ, and together encouraging people not to give up on life, and to worship you, God, our creator. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with me. God loves you. You are of great value. Even if you don't believe in him, God made you of great value. He made you like him. He made you in his image. Special. Awesome. 
you have uh, something to give, and that's yourself, a caring person to help another. Amen. Thank you.